In this short video, we're going to revisit Cayley's theorem. So let's first recall what it says. So Cayley's theorem says that every group G is isomorphic to a subgroup of the symmetric group on G. So remember the symmetric group, sim of G, is just the group of all bijections from G to itself. Now the way we proved Cayley's theorem was by building a map which we called L from G to sim G. And what the map did is, well, it takes an element G and G, and it has to send it to a bijection from G to itself. And we called this bijection L sub G. And the L here stands for left multiplication, and the sub G tells us we're going to left multiply by G. So I have to tell you what the map actually does. So LG is a map from G to G, it's supposed to be a bijection, and it's going to send an element X and G to G times X. So it just multiplies elements in G on the left with little g. Now what we have to show is that this map L is well defined. So in this case, that means that the, the output, which is L sub G, is actually an element of sim g. That means lg should actually be a bijection. So need to show that lg is a bijection. Okay, fine. Once it's a bijection, then we need to show that L is a homomorphism. And since we want g to be isomorphic to a subgroup of sim g, we also want L to be injective. So an injective homomorphism is called a monomorphism. So we show that L is a mono, right? Mono means one, so one to one. Homomorphism, so monohomomorphism is a monomorphism. Now the downside of Cayley's theorem is that we're embedding G into a group sim of G which is really really big usually. So for instance the order of sim of G is equal to the order of G factorial. So even if G is relatively small, say a group of order 5, automatically sim of G is going to have order 5 factorial which is 120. So it would be really nice if we could somehow relate G to a symmetric group on a set which is much, much smaller. Okay, so let's let G be some group. And now let's let H be a subgroup of G. One thing we can do is form the cosets. And we're going to use this notation. We're going to say G mod H. And these are going to be the left cosets of H and G. So all things of the form GH, where G runs through the group elements. So we're going to write down an extension of Cayley's theorem. And this extension is going to say that the map, and we'll call it L again, only this time it's going to go from the group not to the symmetric group of G, but to the symmetric group on the set of left cosets of H and G. We're going to say that the map, which sends little g, and again actually to the same map, we'll call it L sub G, but only now it's going to go from G mod H to G mod H. It has to take a coset, we'll call it XH, and send it to another coset. And the coset it'll send it to is just G X H. Right? So we take the coset uh, representative X and we'll multiply it on the left by G. Now again we have some things to uh, say. First uh, we're going to have to make sure that this map L is well defined and we're going to want that L is going to be a homomorphism because what we really want to say is this map L is a homomorphism. And 
And we can also say what the kernel of this homomorphism is. So the kernel of L is equal to the intersection over all x and g, x, h, x inverse. That is, we're going to look at all the conjugates of h, and we're going to intersect those. Now, the importance of this extension is that g mod h, particularly for large h relative to the size of g, is going to be a much smaller set than g was, which means that the symmetric group on g mod h will be smaller than the symmetric group on g. And we're going to be able to use this to get information about g. For example, let's say that we know that the order of g does not divide the order of the symmetric group on g mod h, which we know is actually just the order of g mod h factorial. If g doesn't divide that, then we know that that map L must not be injective. Why? Well, if L from g to sim g mod h is injective, or 1 to 1, then, well, since L is a homomorphism, and L is 1 to 1, that means G is isomorphic to a subgroup of sim G mod H. And once we know it's isomorphic to a subgroup, then Lagrange's theorem kicks in. That would tell us that the order of G is going to divide the order of sim G mod H. which is a contradiction. Okay, so we conclude that L is not one-to-one, -one, and this implies that the kernel of L is not equal to the identity element in G. Okay, so what? Well, we know, this is key here, we know that the kernel of L is a normal subgroup of G. And if the normal sub if a G has a normal subgroup which is not the identity, then that's going to imply that G is not a simple group. So here's an example of that. Let's say we have a group G whose order is 36, which is uh, 4 times 9. Now we know that G has a CeeLo 3 subgroup. Okay, if we call that CeeLo 3 subgroup, say, Q, then we know that the size of G mod Q is going to be, well, the size of G divided by the size of Q, which is going to be 36 divided by 9, or 4. Okay, but now we know that the order of the group, which is 36, does not divide the order of G mod Q factorial, which is 4 factorial, or 24. And therefore, automatically, G is not simple. Remember why. When the order of the group does not divide the number of cosets of a subgroup factorial. That means that that corresponding homomorphism that we get from the extended Cayley theorem is not injective. Otherwise, Lagrange's theorem would say the order would divide. And therefore, the kernel is non-trivial, and since the kernel is always a normal subgroup, we know that the group is not simple.